monthly memory verse. We give a monthly memory verse out here. And the one we have uh, for this month is almost ended. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And I'm not sure about anybody else, hallelujah, but this scripture was the thing that kept me anchored this week. Multiple challenges. I'd say this week was full of challenges. But the greatest challenge to me was my response, hallelujah, to the things that were coming against me just in this week. So many different areas, so many different levels. And uh, but I thank and praise God, one for my wife, I thank and praise God for the saints, the apostles, so you can reach out and call, another brother, so you can call and get prayer from, hallelujah, and join up in prayer as you stand, hallelujah, against the wiles and schemes of the adversary, that you may see the salvation of the Lord, hallelujah, work on your behalf in the land of the living. So I thank God, thank God, hallelujah. Yeah. Week full of challenges, hallelujah. And uh, I'm not going to speak right, but I know this week's been full of challenges. But I know it's been a season as well for many of us that's been just full of opportunities, one, to draw back, or two, press forward, three, press in. Been just a season where it's been more of pressing in on just standing. Sometimes it's not going back or seemingly not, doesn't get you going forward, but it's just standing. Standing, holding the line. Holding your position, holding the place of confession your faith, just standing until you see the salvation of God come in, hallelujah, and sum up the rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, you know, I'm encouraged. I thank God I'm encouraged. I thank God for the Lord allow me to be, be alive in the midst of the land of the living, to be a part of the body of Christ, to be in this season on the earth where there are great things that are happening in the earth, hallelujah, whether we consider them good or bad. There's great things that are happening in this earth, things that are unfolding, things that are being revealed, hallelujah. And God, I'm telling you, God has got it all wrapped up under control. God's got it all wrapped up in his divine yeah. plan for the earth, hallelujah. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah, you know, we say we keep moving closer to the end, days are growing more wicked and wickeder where people deal with just itching up to themselves, teachers, to appease their emotions, to appease their sins, to give them an easy way out. Instead of standing still and pressing into the things of God. Hallelujah. So let me move on before I, before I head in another direction. I know it's not the Lord. So last week we started talking about building the walls. And the title the Lord gave me uh, was Use What's Been Appointed. And so we're going to talk this week about the wall, the bulwarks, and most importantly, how it's a twofold application. I tell you, it's a season, before the season hit, and as it began to be uh, revealed more, I prophesied, began telling everybody, this is a time where God's rebuilding the church. God's refreshing, restoring, and, re and reviving, but also reinstituting principles, sound doctrine back into the body of Christ. Reinstituting sound principles, sound wisdom, sound counsel, sound guidance back into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. This is how God's going to be re-ushering in the reverence we talked about weeks ago and the fear of God and the respect of God again through this whole atmosphere Multiple things have been coming together, working for the good of man on the earth, but much more so the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Isaiah chapter 1, verse 26 and verse 1, sorry, sorry, Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 1 reads, In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. And God says, use what's been appointed for the walls and bulwarks because God's calling us into a place that we need to start rebuilding. Hallelujah. The walls. Rebuilding once again the walls, hallelujah, of the church, of the body of Christ, walls of salvation. I'm going to go back on something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to slow down here and teach this a little bit. God said, I will appoint salvation. Listen, when it comes to 
materials that are used to build stuff, engineers and architects, they appoint certain materials for the structure of the home or for the building, depending on what the use is, depending on what is determined for, they appoint certain materials. And so God says, I've appointed the materials that are in salvation for walls and for bulwarks. And where you're going to find those materials, the resources of the materials from is going to be from God's word. Yeah. Remember, God says, God will appoint salvation for what? The purpose of building or repairing or restoring or reviving the walls. Yeah. So when you go look in there and say, okay, salvation can also mean the materials. The things that God has already given, have already bought and paid for. Now all you got to do then is go over there, go into the word of God, and pick out the passages, the word, and start applying it to the walls. Now listen, I told you it's a twofold application. One part is talking about the individual. Because in the body of Christ, though we are one collectively as a whole, but we're also one with individual parts. The Bible says we have moving parts. You're not the head, you're not the eye, you're not the toe, you're not the ear, you're not the mouth. Everybody's got the same part. But there are parts to this thing. So we'll talk about the first application. Talking about the body of Christ itself. God wants to say it's time as an individual that you start building yourself to be a stone, a brick in the wall. Now, I told you, it's a twofold application in rebuilding. Because look, this season has caused some of us to leave ourselves vulnerable to the elements and, and to the trying and testing that's in the earth right now. We have allowed for ourselves to lose. Remember, walls back in the days, even now, they were uh, uh, used to be a place of protection as a defense. Amen? And we talked about last time, people put walls around them as a defense to keep things out of their business. Come on. Come on. So walls were designed to keep adversity out of my business. People out of my business. Things out of my business. So the walls back then were designed to keep people out of the city's business. So he's saying this. The Bible says, listen, in Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28, we're talking about, this is a twofold application. Can remember, the wall is made up of not just one solid piece. Now, now, now some, some have been, but back Further back in time, they were built up of individual stones. Individual stones layered on top of one another, layered beside each other to, to, to make this one purpose, this one object, this one defense, and it was called a wall. Come on. So listen, I talked about earlier, individually, through this season, many of us have allowed for ourselves to be this. Listen to this. Proverbs 25 and verse 28. Remember, the first application is to talk about individuals. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Stay with me. Now, that word has rule means has the last say so as to how you respond to what's on the outside of you. Amen? Trying to affect what's going on the inside of you. That's why it says some of us have become like cities whose walls have been torn down. Amen? I might know about you all, but just this week, I was all for myself almost at that point with my challenges. Almost not for the adversary to get me to a place where it's just like ridiculous. Hallelujah. 
So it says, in this season, a lot of us have allowed for ourselves through the response of what has been going on in our lives on the outside to cause us to become like cities that have been broken down without walls. Some of us, what's been broken down has been your faith. Because we're going to see when we talk about again, the Lord said, I will appoint what? Salvation. I will appoint certain materials to be walls. Now bear with me. Stay with me on this. Because many of us have allowed for our walls to be torn down or the layers to be penetrated, to become of no effect by the outside. That's what I'm saying here. Now remember I said individually we are different bricks in the wall. We're talking about wall right now. And you know how a wall back and back, further back, they were compiled of stones on top of stones, a brick on top of bricks. And you ever see a brick where when the uh, surveyor comes out from now these days, the inspectors will go to the house and they'll see a brick that's been worn away or has like a uh, been hole or someone's been dug into it, it's got a hole in it. And now the integrity of that particular brick has lost the ability to be able to help to be part of the sustaining strength of the wall. You with me? So to say, that's got to be replaced. It's got to be, you got to replace that brick with a brick that not, has not been uh, so, uh, um, how can I say it, worn away and, we, uh, and degraded is that it has been come to the point where eroding away, eroded, thank you, it's been so eroded away that's got to be replaced. And sometimes they know that one brick can cause the whole wall to collapse on itself. And some of us have allowed for the elements in this season to erode away at us where we're no longer an effective part of the wall. Come on. Now I told you a twofold application. One is speaking to the individual. Two, I'm going to start talking to the leaders, the apostles, prophets, pastors, or bishops, teachers. Hallelujah. Yeah. Twofold, because one is going to be preparing yourself and making yourself ready to be put in as part of that wall. The other one has got to know where the stone goes in the building. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Hallelujah. So God has said, that's why he said in Isaiah 26, I'm appointed for salvation walls and bulwarks. And listen, don't you know in the body of Christ, each one of us holds a portion of salvation for each other. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Each one of us has an intricate part in the wall. Don't you know when the enemy sees an air of weakness in the wall? They'll work on that weakness. So they can find a way into the city. Bear with me. And now I said on the first application, we have allowed for the things in this environment, especially this season. I said long earlier, about a year ago, before we even launched out to you know move further out when we started in the house, you know, um, that that this is a new season. And we're entering into new things where old things have just passed away. So now, there's some things, I can say this, and help me Holy Ghost with this, I can, I can articulate this where it's understood. Mm -hmm. Let me talk about bricks sometimes have to be refurbished. Or they either had the cement re-injected in it. If you don't pull the whole thing out, they want to fill it back in with solid substance so that it becomes a, 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 a sustainable factor in the wall. Bear with me. So, in this season, God 
says, all right, some new things are going to be done, but I got to refill you, reseal you all over again as you begin to enter into this new part of the season. Because the wall, once again, needs to be rebuilt, reestablished, reinspected. Hallelujah. Back to the individual. Switch with you. God, go with me here. So, the Lord's saying, on an individual basis, some of us have become how we responded, how we allowed, listen, how you respond to the environment and the test and challenges in the season and the fire and the pressures and the temptations can render you either a continued fortified city or a continued useful brick in the wall or it can render you like to a city who's been broken down to the foundation where the walls huh, are no longer there and now everything finds its way in finds itself housing in there Finds itself, I'm only, you got to bear with me here. I'm, I got to run it the way God told me to run it. Because <laughs> it's important that as God begins to rebuild the body of Christ, it starts on, with individuals. Revival starts with individuals. Rebuilding starts with one piece at a time. Sometimes one section at a time. Restoration can start with one piece of material at a time as it's going through inspection. So I told you the twofold application that the Lord told me to get into. So first is the individual brick. We're going to start, I'm telling you, we're going to go into Nehemiah, how Nehemiah had to go back and rebuild the wall. Now listen, I'm going to reiterate something, I'm going to move forward. Back in Nehemiah, in the book, chapter 4, the enemy was not worried about or concerned or, listen, fearful about the children of Israel. Because why? They at one time, they were going all through the land. But they said, do not let them rebuild this wall. They didn't mind if they came together. They were doing that. They didn't mind if they broke bread together. They probably were doing that. What was concerning them is that if I can get, if they build this wall again, we're done for sure. Because when, I'm going ahead, but, but when a person is willing to rebuild something, they understand the, what, the value in it. Come on. You ever see an old vehicle or old shoes or old jacket? It just looks like it just needs a little bit here and a little bit here, and you'll restore it back to its rightful use, where it's functional, where it's fulfilling its purpose, where it's now doing what it was designed to do as it was from the beginning. So listen, bear with me. So the Lord's saying, first application is the individual brick. Now listen, I'm talking to the individual brick today. The Lord says, use the ingredients. Use what I appointed for your salvation. And it goes back to the word. I said last week, there are ingredients in the earth that God put together that when it comes together, it forms a solid material. 
He has allowed for man through the ages to get to that place where he says, if I take this element, if I take this element, if I take this element, this will form a solid brick. Or I can form an impenetrable piece of glass. Or we can design metal that not even a bomb or bullet can go through. God's saying, same thing with me. He says what? God will appoint salvation for. So he says, listen, I appointed things in your salvation to build your walls. I've appointed things to build your walls. I've appointed things in you to be a sustainable brick in the wall. Let me go run with me. What are these things that God appointed? He appointed faith, Amen. prayer, fasting, come on, giving, come on, tithing, sowing, prayers, healing, encouragement, <laughs> accountability, come on. Amen. God says there are things, these are the materials, the ingredients that come together that make that one around you build a solid wall of protection. It's a guaranteed solid wall of protection, but you got to use the material and apply it so that the wall becomes impenetrable. So that wall is now a defense, though you don't see it. Now listen. In there's countries now, have you noticed now where you're not seeing walls around, say, cities anymore, or countries anymore, or states or provinces anymore to mark out their territory, or saying, this is my country, you know why? Look, we may no longer see, like, say, for the Great Wall of China, it's still there, raised up. And you, we may no longer see, per se, walls that protect a state naturally, but it's there. What do you mean? Although we, people out here outside, don't see it. But I promise you, if a nation comes under attack, the walls go up. I mean, you start having missile defenses go up. Next you know, a missile comes out of D.C., Maryland, Nevada, Ohio, the Carolinas, Virginia, the mountains. Though the walls weren't seen with the natural eye, let the enemy try to attack. I promise you, the walls of defense will, initially, will automatically go into activation. God say the same thing about you. When, when, when you take what God has given you to build your walls, though, though the world don't see it, but when you walk, people don't see it. But when the enemy wants to use somebody to play the part of a fool who says in the heart, they ain't got no God with them. Come on. Who says that God's not with them. Automatically, you stand, what? Behind your walls. You stand behind your salvation. And a lot of us in this season has come from behind the walls of their salvation. Trying to deal with this environment and their circumstances in their own strength. See, that's why back in Nehemiah chapter 4, the Amorite said, don't let them build no wall. Why? Because the wall provides a protection that won't require a whole lot of energy from you if you build it right. All you got to do is stand behind the wall and let the wall do its job. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. Tell you, God is saying, 
as the church collectively and individually, it's time to rebuild the walls. Because this environment has allowed for us to become, how can I say it, slothful on our due diligence when it's come to our salvation that comes from the Lord. Our hope, our trust that comes from the Lord. So, back to Nehemiah chapter 4, real quick. I, I'm going to read that. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 4. I'm going to read it. Just real quick. I'm going to point something out. What I've said, I'm going to point it out to you. This is time for the church. Individually, as our jobs, individual, individuals, and collectively. To start working on the wall. Listen, chapter 4, verse 1. But it so happened when Sanballat heard, Amorite, that we, it's Nehemiah, being recorded by Nehemiah, that we were rebuilding the wall. He was furious. Now, you got to understand, it's not so much of the man in the natural being furious. He's just an outward response of the real thing being upset. And the real thing behind him is the devil. He's saying that all the time. We don't war against flesh and blood. It's against principality and powers. Rule dark spiritual host against high places according to Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah. Yeah. So the person, the thing who was angry was the devil. Because he knows what happens when a child of God and the people of God can rebuild the walls. There's a confidence that's restored. Because they know all they got to do is stand behind the wall long enough for the salvation to come get them. They, they, he, was, he, went, he was furious because he knows once the wall comes up, there comes a place of comfort in the people. They're now at peace. They're not running around wondering what's going on, what's going to happen. When the wall, they, he knew, that's what he said. Look, 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 look. I'm going to and from here, but listen. He was furious and very indignant. You know what's going to get indignant? Everything comes out their mouth about you. And it's usually based because you're doing something the Lord wants you to do that they don't want you to do. That's when that demon gets indignant and tries to tear you down, trying to disrupt your course, trying to distract you, trying to intimidate you about rebuilding your hope. Come on, come on somebody, stay with me. And he mocked the Jews, and he spoke before his brethren, the army of Samaria, and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Listen, he said, it's constant time people look at the, the Christians and saying, really? You a Christian? You weak? <laughs> but listen, I ain't got to be strong like that. I just got to be strong in my faith. The person you got to worry about is my father. That's what you should be concerned about. So they say the Jews were feeble, weak, vulnerable. Will they fortify themselves? This is the devil speaking. The devil said a lot of us have allowed for the walls to be torn down. And a lot of us just started going the course of this environment, started accepting everything this environment said. And now all of a sudden, you're going to have a mind to rebuild the walls that protected you at one time, that kept you safe, 
kept you at a peace of mind. Go with Isaiah 26 and verse 1 through 3. He said, after the walls, he says what? I will keep his mind who will stay on me, who what? Trusts in me. That means you trust in the things that God appointed, salvation God appointed for walls. Come on, somebody. Know the scripture. I'm not, I'm not taking it out of context. I'm telling you why we can trust him. So he said, listen, he said, listen to the adversary is saying right now. Because many of us are beginning to understand that the only thing out here is a lying spirit. A fearful demon more worried about us rebuilding and reestablishing our walls where whatever hits it, I'm still good. Where you gonna throw it, man? I'm still good. Listen. Verse 2, chapter 4, book of Nehemiah. And he spoke for his brethren in the army of Samaria and said, What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? One. Will they offer sacrifices? Lord have mercy. Two. Will they complete in the day? Three. Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rock? Oh, good God. How many, how, how many prophets have been saying revival's coming? I know it just wasn't me when all this hit. Prophets been saying, possibly saying, those who hear from God, dreams that, that what? God's about to revive the body again. Revival is hope. Listen, the devil even said it out loud. Will they do what? Revive the stones. Listen, will they revive the people again? Now listen, we are lively stones according to the word of God. From the heaps of rubbish, stones that are burnt. Listen, listen. Look, look, even the adversary knows some of y'all have been torn down to the floor. With trusting God and believing God and doing your best to withstand the temptations adversary thrown at you. The darts, fiery darts. Then you got plagues out there. Now you got people not now worried about your financial status. Worried about how you're going to eat. Listen, some of y'all have been torn down by worry, by being anxious, by being fretful. But it's just, just been torn down. So he's saying, will they really revive the stones? Someone needs to hear. The devil's asking you, will you re be revived again? Okay. So he says, so he says this. Two for application. One, this is speaking to the individual. Because God's appointed salvation are things that help build the wall. And the wall of bricks are things that help these stones, their ingredients that work together for the purpose of the stone, for the good of the stone to be a solid, solid uh, uh, part in the wall, in establishing the wall, and rebuilding the wall, or repairing the wall, or just building the wall. Remember we said that earlier. So the Lord saying, now one, look, walls and bulwarks. Now, for those who did their history and understand, I really like, I really like medieval times, kind of theatrics, movies, stuff like that. It, I love seeing how they 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 show people fighting for like days sometimes. They're at war. 
using their own strength out in the fields fighting. It reminds me of Old Testament. They said they fought all day and all night to the point where their sword was stuck to their hands. And sometimes you see that people in some movies, they'll show it, you know, just to, to see, like, just to, to show the intensity and the focus of how the, the warrior was in the fight who, who was willing not to give up the fight. And uh, so anyway, and so there are walls that get built around the city. But the Lord said, not just walls. Look at Isaiah 26, verse 1. He says, I will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. So the Lord is saying, I just don't want you to build a wall. Now the bulwarks is talking more to leadership. The walls, individually. But listen, the bulwarks are, I said last week, are built very thick. Anybody who's a wall of China, that's a great example of a very long bulwark. It's reinforced. It's so wide, you can have chariots run on it. You can have guards on it. Then it has a watch out, lookout tower that goes higher up so you can see further out. So the Lord says, let's talk to the leaders. Lord, have mercy. I'm shifting here a little bit. How, it's, how bulwarks are built. They built as this. They are an embankment raised as a defense of fortif fortification. Excuse me. Fortification. Something that's made to protect you from dangerous or unpleasant situations. Now, walls have a purpose. Keep things out. To, to preserve what's on the inside. The peace. Your joy. Your confidence. Your certainty. Your focus. Now, if you go, go, to, go through your day-to-day business. That's what they did in the city when the walls were built. People went about the day-to-day -day business with no concern, no worries. They weren't anxious for nothing. Because why? The walls, they had a defense around them. Their first line of defense was that wall. So now, now, oh Lord, I'm going a little bit to leadership. Now for the leaders, the Lord's not saying it's not so much now the walls that's got to be built. He says, you got to build bulwarks. This thing's got to be now rebuilt with some more thickness to it. So it means be careful on how you are delivering God's word to his people. Be careful who you are putting into positions. Come on. Be careful who you are charging and giving mandates and orders to and ordaining. I don't even know. I have plans saying this. And ordaining in this season. Because these are going to be the watchmen in the tower. These are going to be the ramparts. Now, a bulwark has ramparts, which means there's reinforcements on the bulwark. Like little reinforcements to keep the person, when they look over, to keep them from falling over. Mm -hmm. So they'll be able to look over without falling over. So now you got, man, now you got the instructions of what type of wall God saying build. Talk to the leadership. But let me, let me come back a little bit. Reiterate something. First, God saying to be a sustainable, viable, resourceful use in the wall, you got to make yourself ready. As becoming part of the wall, the reviving, the reinstituting, the refortifying in the body of Christ. There's a part, there are things that have to be in the bricks and the stones so that they can be an effective part of the wall. So he says the ingredients that's going to be needed 
for the individual is going to be found right here in the Word of God. Where you get your trust. I told you this is individual, then it goes into the leadership aspect of this. So that when adversity hits, you have rule over how you respond. You got to rebuild yourself. That, that you're not just being thrown by every storm that comes in. There may be some things that had eroded away at you. You need to start filling them things back in with cement. You know, I think you get like real cement sometimes. They put it back in those spats of cement they put in there. So you say, okay, no, don't, we don't want to take the brick out because it costs too much, you know? Because it won't, it might take one brick, it might take, take a section out. Yeah, put a whole section in. He's saying, I don't want, he says, that's not desire. Let's refill it with substance. Weight, ability to hold, to be part of the weight of the, of the wall. I'm going to refill you again. Come on, somebody. So as God wants to refill again with his hope, with his vision, with his plans, with his strength, with his trust, with his truth, with his faith, with his deliverance, with his stability. Come on, somebody. So he wants to refill it in. And I can, that he can reseal it back up. But, but, but... <laughs> He said, you got to take the ingredients in. And allow for them to go to work. That it may seal you up all over again. That it may, on an individual basis, it may fortify you again. It may allow for you to get back into that place where you worship God with your life and spirit and truth. What, 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 what's Sam Bow said? Where, where, where they can, they can, where you'll be able to offer to God the things you have in your hand, mm -hmm. the things you have in your mind, mm -hmm. the things you have in your heart. Remember, I told you, this environment you wrote it away from a lot of people's personal walls and wrote it away as them becoming an effective part of the, of the wall. So the Lord's saying, all right. Let, let me refill it. Let me refill you. And my friend said that you may continue to maintain your purpose. Maintain your place in the wall. First one. Second one. Second one is to the leaders. Nehemiah was given the vision on how to rebuild the wall. He was given the vision on who to bring with him to rebuild the wall. He also was given favor to rebuild the wall. Meaning, it, it didn't cost him anything but to go in faith. It didn't cost him anything but simply asking the king. We know who our king is, King Jesus. Asking him for what he needs to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And I'm going to touch a little bit because I'm running out of time. I'm going to get into the leaders in the body of Christ next week. But now the Lord's saying, now as the leaders, you need to know who to talk to. Nehemiah didn't talk to everybody about the business God gave him to rebuild. I'm saying this now. God's not calling every leader to either hook back up with old network connections. Nehemiah didn't go to the old scribes. He didn't go to those who's supposed to have known God. It says that he didn't, he didn't consult, he didn't tell them. Because God said, don't tell them. But I'm going to bring around, I'm going to tell you who to bring with you. To rebuild this thing. So leaders. In the body of Christ. I'm just not talking about. 
church fellowships, although they are part of the body of Christ. It's time to ask the Lord, who should I talk to? Who should I bring in on this project to start building, to rebuild the walls, to revive your people again? To bring, to fortify your people again? Who, who am I going to use as the bulwarks, bulwarks, excuse me. Who, who am I going to use as the tower? Who am I going to be using as the ramparts on top so that people don't start falling over? Who am I going to use as being the watchman? Who am I going to use who knows how to build but also ready to fight at the building can progress. Remember Nehemiah, he picked certain families out, certain people, who won, who was willing. They had enough to I'm gonna go there next week. One, you gotta be find people who are willing. You don't want nobody you gotta force. It's a headache. Because now no longer, no longer, not only do you have to do your job, but now you gotta do their job. By making them do their job, you don't want nobody like that. It's rough because you start neglecting what you have to do. So first, you gotta find the people who are willing to get in there. Two, who have the vision for their part already in their heart. Come on. Three, those who know how to stand and fight when the time comes, who won't run. When opposition come, who won't run when the Amorites and the Samaritans come and start talking about you ain't gonna be, there ain't nothing gonna happen over there, ain't nothing happening over there. What are they gonna do? They they gonna rebuild what? I feel God's presence. Oh, hey, Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Master. Yes. See. Lord said you gotta find those who are willing. Who, are, who will willingly offer themselves to the work of God. Two, who have the vision for that part of the wall or ministry for the people. Come on, oh, get the list the same work. Three, who are prepared in their mind to war while they're building. If war is called, they had a sword by their side, and they also had brick laying in their hand. Hallelujah. Come on now. So, as leaders, we'll get more into this. I'm going to get to the leadership tomorrow. What you, have to, what you need to look for. Don't look for the people who, 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 who tell you what they can do. Look for the people who just go right into what they can do. That's why the Lord told Nehemiah, don't tell none of them folks who see what's, how things have been torn down and they're not helping, they're facilitating the tearing down. They're keeping people broke down, broke up, broken hearted. Don't even go to them. Because you already know. I'm going to send people, one, and I'm going to show you who has the heart, the will, and the fight. Could you imagine? I'm, I'm, I'm in right here. Could you imagine these people? Because each one of them had the responsibility, we'll get back more into the word, had a responsibility to help build walls around the certain gate entrances that had purpose. Don't you know? There are certain people, certain parts of the wall that usher in God's presence. That usher in. Usher in some things and it helps some things get moved right on out. So they were there building the walls 
has certain gates and certain doors. They didn't, they didn't just build their walls. They made their houses there. They said, I'm going to take the responsibility woo, to watch at this point. Come on. Tell it's twofold. Tell them to look for the season leaders. Don't look for the good and gold. Don't look for the well known name. Look for those who are not known. Who are sometimes rarely seen. But the God says, I'm going to show you their heart. Hallelujah. I'm going to show you their heart. And then, get them. Get them to you. Bring them to you. And tell them the vision I've given you. And he said, don't worry about huh, how you're going to take care of it because I've touched the king's heart to supply your needs. Touch the king's heart not to be afraid of what I have you to do. Not to be afraid of what's about to happen. But get in on the blessings of what God's about to do for his people. So we end right there. We start right there. So I want to encourage you all. It's time to, as the Bible says, use the things. God bless you. God bless you. Use the things that God has said right here. He said this: God will appoint salvation. Meaning, He will appoint the materials for walls. And bulwarks. Individually, we're talking about. We had to talk about that. As we all come together. We're going to talk more next week. I'm going to speak more to the leadership in the body of Christ. What to look for. Until we meet again at this point, thanks for joining us here at Break Fishing Ministry. Currently at 325 Warrior Road, Westminster. Hallelujah. We thank and praise God. Hallelujah. For what, what's, what's been going on here, we thank and praise God for how God's just been blessing us and the people, hallelujah, who've been able to come and fellowship with us um, and have been supporting us near and far. So we're going to close out. The Lord continue to bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord guide you. The Lord strengthen you. The Lord refresh you. The Lord restore you. The Lord refill you. The Lord repurpose you. The Lord recommission you. Lord, we sell you. Lord, we perfect you. Lord, we establish you. Lord, we revive you. Lord, we fortify you. In all the things he's called you to do. As we move into, as we move, as we're preparing to come out of a season, Lord, to enter in. Good God. Good God. As we begin to enter in. Shandarabahasandar. A season of restoration. Until I saw yesterday, the Lord gave me a word of prophecy. He told me to release the wind, the west wind. He showed me the angels have now released the west wind. It's going to be a strong west wind blowing over this country, over this nation, and in the earth, over his people, first and foremost, but also through this country nation. He said, I'm releasing, tell him, I'm releasing, I've commanded the releasing of the west winds to blow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Amen. Hallelujah. Be encouraged. Until we meet again. God bless you.